Hello everyone and welcome to a video in which we are going to be talking about the physics behind table tennis. Aren't you excited? I know yes. this guy is excited. But before we do that, I want to give you a brief overview about how the sport is played. Table tennis is a two player sport in which you must hit the ball over the net and let it bounce on the opponent's side. Your goal is to make sure that your opponent does not hit the ball back to your side. If your opponent fails to hit the ball back, then you get a point. But if you fail to hit the ball back to your opponent, then your opponent gets a point. The game is over once one player reaches 11 points, and whoever reaches 11 points first is the winner. Regardless if you're actually good at the sport, or you just have lucky trick shots, or you can't even get the ball to bounce on the other side, let's have a look at the physics behind table tennis. Table tennis athletes must have a strong arm with a great mass. This is because force is equal to mass times acceleration. If the mass of the arm is large and the acceleration is also large, it allows for a greater force to be applied on the ball when it is hit. Having strong legs is also very important because you can produce a larger force of friction which means that a player can move around quickly to hit the ball. Additionally, table tennis players must have longer arms to allow for greater torque. Since the center of rotation is the center of the body, a longer arm means larger radius. Torque is equal to force times radius, so if you have a greater radius, a smaller force is required to reach the same amount of torque as someone with a smaller radius. Momentum is mass times velocity, so if the velocity of the arm is large, which happens with a stronger arm as mentioned before, then the momentum that is transferred to the ball will be greater. This makes it harder for the opponent to hit the ball back to the original player. Lastly, players must practice the follow through because the greater the, the distance that a player covers with his arm combined with a larger force will increase the work that is applied when hitting the ball. This contributes to making it difficult for the opponent to react when the ball is on their side. The majority of these key attributes are found in the athletes such as Zhu Jin, Ma Long, and Zhang Jike. The blade of the paddles used in table tennis are made of varying types of wood. The paddle's mass and how much control of it and the ball the player has depends on the wood that is used. The table is made of high density fiberboard. The tables are smooth in order to minimize friction between the ball and the table as much as possible. The ball itself is made of plastic. They were initially made of celluloid, which was much easier to spin. When plastic balls were implemented, the game became more dependent on speed due to the ball's harder outer surface. The rubber sheet on the paddle varies between four types of rubber, smooth, short pips or pimpled, long pips, and anti-top spin. Each material influences the ball in different ways, thus influencing how athletes play. Smooth rubber has a smooth surface with a layer of sponge underneath it. The material's smoothness allows as much of the sheet to make contact with the ball as possible. As a result, this rubber allows for the greatest spin on the ball. Short pips rubber has a bumpy surface with a layer of sponge underneath it. This material is used by athletes who rely on the ball's speed rather than its spin. Both of these rubber sheets utilize a sponge layer. Thicker sponge layers provide greater speed and spin due to its greater mass, whereas thinner layers allow for more control of the paddle because there is not as much mass. Long pips have a similar build to short pips, the difference being that they have larger bumps. This is used to reverse the spin on the oncoming ball. Anti-topspin rubber has a smooth surface but does not generate very much speed or spin. As such, it is mostly used to neutralize an oncoming ball's spin. Some players use a different type of rubber on each side of their paddle to allow for more options during a match. Now that we've talked about the athletes and the equipment used in table tennis, we will now be discussing the heavy backspin serve. And in order to understand the physics behind a heavy backspin serve, I have an unpaid intern who's going to help us out. All serves must begin with an upward toss. But why is that? Well, let's take a closer look. Once the ball is thrown into the air, there is a force, a gravitational force. In this case, acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And because it's a negative acceleration, that means that downward velocity is increasing. The ball now has a high velocity, and once you use the paddle to hit the ball, momentum will be transferred from the paddle to the ball, therefore increasing the ball's velocity even more. In order to create a spin, you must brush the paddle lightly against the ball. This will generate a force of friction, which will lead to an increase in kinetic rotational energy, making the ball spin backwards. The heavy backspin serve generates kinetic rotational energy along with kinetic translational energy. Once the ball bounces on the table, more kinetic translational energy is transferred into the table than kinetic rotational energy. This allows for kinetic rotational energy to move the ball backward as it overcomes the initial translational energy that was put into the ball by the paddle.
Well, that's the physics behind table tennis. Thanks for watching, everyone. And remember, stay home and stay safe.